Hello parents. One of the main goals of first grade math is to give children multiple strategies for solving addition and subtraction situations up through 20. One of the strategies that we are teaching is to use strip diagrams. And for this entire week, our first grade team has decided that when we solve story problems, we will be using strip diagrams so that our students can get a really good, strong foundation in strip diagrams. Strip diagrams are basically a way of looking at addition and subtraction situations as the whole and the parts. And as students get older, they'll also be able to use strip diagrams to look at multiplication and division. This is something that's really being used in schools, um, definitely all the way through elementary and even into secondary math. So we're starting right here in first grade. Actually, we started in kindergarten last year with strip diagrams, but we're just growing upon that foundation here in first grade. So I want to show you a story problem that your kids solved today and show you how we solved it with strip diagrams and then how you can support the use of strip diagrams at home. So here's our story problem for today. I actually changed the numbers um, to make it easier to show on the computer because the numbers I had were a little bit uh, too large to show in the space that I have here. But the story is, Kylie has 12 cookies. Eight of her cookies are shaped like turkeys. How many of her cookies are not shaped like turkeys? So in Grand Prairie, what we do after we've read a story problem is we look at what do we already know in the story and what do we need to find out. So we already know that Kylie has 12 cookies. We also already know that eight of those cookies are shaped like turkeys. I have my students circle the numbers in there. So what we don't know is how many of her cookies are not shaped like turkeys. We would point out that in this story there's nothing being added or nothing being subtracted. We're looking at an amount and we're having to decide how much of that amount is turkeys and how much of it is not turkeys. So this is where we pull in the parts in the whole. The students would need to know that the 12 cookies Kylie has, that's the whole amount that we're dealing with here. The eight cookies that are shaped like turkeys and however many cookies are not shaped like turkeys, those two are the parts and those parts the eight cookies shaped like turkeys, and however many cookies are not shaped like turkeys, those two, those two parts make up the whole of Kylie's 12 cookies. So here's how we would show it with a strip diagram. We'd start by showing the whole, 12 cookies. I've got 12 blocks here, and that would make up the whole portion of the strip diagram. And we have the students prove how many are there. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. These 12 blocks represent Kylie's 12 cookies. We already know from the story that she has eight cookies that are shaped like turkeys. So now I'm going to represent that part with another set of blocks. I chose orange blocks to represent that. So I've got my hole up here, and I'm going to put that first part that I already know down here. I'm going to match it up next to the hole. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of her cookies that are shaped like turkeys. So I can see what's left of the whole, those are the cookies that are not shaped like turkeys. There's one, two, three, four. Four of Kylie's cookies are not shaped like turkeys. So what we've just created here is a strip diagram. We showed the whole, the 12 cookies. We showed the eight cookies that were shaped like turkeys that we knew and then we figured out that this means that four of her cookies were not shaped like turkeys. That was the part of the story that we didn't know. Now I know what you're probably thinking. You're thinking, Mrs. Moss, I don't have blocks to use at home like this. Well, no problem, because your kiddo can, can draw it also. I'm going to draw it right here on my table, but your kid could draw it on paper with pencil or any other writing utensil. So this is how I could show the story um, by drawing it in a strip diagram. I could show one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve cookies. That's Kylie's hole. And actually, in some ways, drawing it's better because we want the kids to label the parts. So I would show that this is twelve. I'm trying to write upside down, so I'm not get that backwards. Twelve cookies are her hole. 
And I know that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 of those cookies are shaped like turkeys. So I've got eight that are turkey shaped. And then this over here, this is the part that I, I don't know. I don't, I think I did that backwards. Sure, sure did. I don't know how many of her cookies are um, not shaped like a turkey. So I can figure this out by filling in the missing part of the story. I know the whole and I know one part. So this is the missing part. Kylie had one, two, three, four turkeys. I'm sorry, four cookies that were not shaped like turkeys. So now I know the answer to the story problem is she has four cookies that are not shaped like turkeys. One of the things that frustrates some of our kids who are able to do this math in their head and they don't need to build models is that they're thinking, I don't need to build the model. I can do this in my head. But understanding different ways that you can show it in a model will serve them well when they get to second grade next year because the numbers will become much larger and they won't be able just to figure it out in their head. Um, so being able to understand which part of this story is uh, the part and which part of the story is the whole, that's really a critical foundational piece of having strong mathematical skills. So um, using strip diagrams at home, using them at school, those will help kids build upon their mathematical knowledge. And I just forgot a really important piece of solving this story that I, I completely left it out, and that is writing a number sentence that would match the story. So for this story problem about Kylie and her um, turkey cookies, the, uh, there would be several different um, number sentences that would be possible examples of how you could solve this problem. One of them would be to say that, um, let me see where I've got the most room to write. Let's see. Eight cookies plus some cookies, I'm not sure how many, equals 12 cookies. That would be one number sentence that you could use. And through the use of this strip diagram, you would determine that this some cookies here, that's four cookies. Another possible number sentence that could be used to solve would be 12, so take the whole, equals, oh wait, I'm about to show you the same thing, sorry, 12 minus 8 equals something. I could start with the whole, the 12 cookies, and take out the 8 cookies that I know are shaped like turkeys, and then what I'm left with would tell me how many of the cookies are not shaped like turkeys. Those are two examples of number sentences that could be used to solve this story problem. Um, and writing a matching number sentence is a really important um, first grade skill that goes along with solving the story problems. Thank you.